This is the Philips BDM3490UC, a 34 inch monitor with a resolution of 3440 by 1440. It comes equipped with a curved IPS panel and this monitor looks great on the inside and out. But is it worth the price tag? Over the last two weeks, I found out. Hey what's up guys and welcome back to another video in the new studio. Today we're looking at this thing and it's the curved ultra wide display from Philips. It comes equipped with a really long model name that I quite frankly can't remember but you can find the full thing down below. And it's a monitor that aims for the high end. It's a curved ultra wide with a resolution of 3440 by 1440, a response time of five milliseconds and a static refresh rate of 60 Hertz. So yes, sadly no FreeSync or G-Sync can be found here. So on paper, it's arguably quite an expensive monitor that arguably could be a little bit outdated because of course LG have released the rival to this, which is the UC98, and that does come equipped with FreeSync technology. But Philips know that a lot of people aren't really fussed by these things and don't want to add extra expense to their monitor. So is this a monitor that's any good and should you be buying it? Well, let's start with the physical overview. This is one hell of an attractive monitor. As soon as I got it on my desk, I was blown away with how good this thing looks. And the thing is, it's not overly big. The bezels itself are fairly slim. You do have a sort of fake black box around the display once you've actually got it turned on, but this isn't really a big deal and I don't mind. And the whole thing just looks really sleek and looks really elegant. So I'm quite happy to report that it'll fit really nicely, whether you're a gamer or whether you're someone that has a really serious studio setup that you're doing photography or video editing or something like that on. I think both parties will be very happy. And it's nice to see that Philips have found a happy medium here because while a lot of people will quite like the outrageous designs from the Acer Predator range, a lot of people won't. So it's nice that they've found a neutral design that will fit in with most people's desk setups. Moving around to the bottom of the monitor, you'll find that this has a nice brushed metal stand. And this stand as well actually houses some speakers that are not bad in the base of the display. So if you are someone that maybe is a photographer that you use headphones a lot of the times, to be honest, you don't really need to worry about getting dedicated speakers because while these things aren't fantastic, they're actually a lot better than most monitor speakers I have used and most people should be quite happy with the results. But let's make this very clear. You will want some form of dedicated sound device if you do any movie watching, gaming, or just anything else that requires a serious amount of music listening of any kind. Moving around to the back of the monitor, you'll find all the ports. It's a sort of white finish around here, and ports-wise, you've got three HDMIs, which is a slightly strange decision, in my opinion. You've got HDMI 2.0, which is fantastic, and it's what I want to see along with that display port. But then you've also got two other HDMI 1.4s. One is equipped with MHL, so if you want to plug your phone in, which no one does, do they? let's be honest, uh, then you can do that. Personally though, and I think a lot of people will agree with me, especially you Mac guys out there, would rather see one of these HDMI swapped out for a Thunderbolt, but that would add an extra degree of finance to this monitor. But LG managed it, so I'm not really sure why Philips haven't done that here. Moving around to the actual back of the monitor though, um, the bottom bit of the monitor, you'll notice that the stand doesn't really move. You can swivel it, um, kind of, it's, I'd call this a fake swivel, which for me is fine, so the whole thing moves very easily. Uh, but the only adjustment otherwise you've got is tilt. Um, and the disappointing hit thing here is you don't have height adjust, and the LG UC98 does have this. For me, it worked out okay, because the monitor may be slightly too low, um, but on my desk I could just adjust my chair and it was fine. But why we don't have height adjust, adjust is slightly strange to me. And if you do have a slightly strange desk setup or you're using a standing desk or I don't know, um, then you might find that your adjustment is uh, sadly uh, unfulfilled because you won't be able to get it to the height you want and you'll just have to rely on the tilt. Not ideal and it's a shame, but then again we do have a more elegant design. But this is definitely something I would trade for the full array of adjustments. No visa mount here as well, sadly. On the underside of the monitor, you will find the buttons for controlling the on-screen menus. This is a physical button, which gets solid thumbs up. You guys know that I love those. And I think that this is the best way to control monitors because if you put the buttons on the right-hand side, then they're either on the front where they can get in the way or they're on the underside where you can't really see what they do. The benefits of having one four-way selector, like LG does, 
and like is present on this Philips is it means that the menus use a sort of drill down system and once you learn where everything is it's very easy to do. So my first few days it wasn't really the most pleasurable experience because I kept cocking it up and doing the wrong thing but as soon as I've learned how to use the menus everything was seamless and I didn't really make any mistakes and ultimately this gets two thumbs up and it's a pretty close to perfect menu system everything is where you'd expect it to be everything works and the only thing I do like to see is maybe the information button uh, that sort of shows you uh, what resolution and things you're using uh, would be a little bit further back um, at the moment you've got to sort of drill down into the menus to get there but really that's a really tiny tweak that I'd make ultimately he's pretty damn good moving on to the actual turning on the display though once you've got this thing turned on and you've calibrated it with the menus it gets even better this is one of the best looking displays if not the best looking display I've ever used the size is perfect the resolution is the perfect trade-off in my opinion yes it would probably nice be a bit nicer to have this even sharper but for gaming, which is what I tend to do most with my monitor use, um, it's perfect because it's a nice balance between performance and image quality. Moving on to the sort of general use though, the colours just pop, the blacks are really deep, and ultimately the panel is really responsive. Now MMD is the company that sort of does the displays now for AOC and for Philips, and Philips are more of the productivity professional sort of guys, whereas AOC are the gamer ones. So more often than not, I will get a Philips monitor and I'll find that the response is slightly off. I was really surprised that even without the smart response set to the faster setting that I eventually set it to, this thing is really nice to use. It feels really fluid, nice and responsive, despite that 60 hertz refresh rate. So I've been very impressed so far. And even if you're just doing the standard thing of web browsing, email, something like that, you get the benefits of being able to snap to windows to uh, the left and right sides of the screen and windows 10 makes this even easier now and i think this was the monitor for me that finally made me decide that yes i want ultra wide i don't want two displays anymore i want one ultra wide display and i guess that is probably one of the biggest praises that i can give to this monitor it's finally made my mind up whether i like ultra wides over two displays and the answer is yes ultra wides i think are the way to go for me but what about productivity and gaming, I hear you ask? Well, we'll start with gaming because I think that is probably what most of you guys are interested in. And this is where I had my biggest doubts. Philips traditionally don't make the best gaming displays and this only has a refresh rate of 60 Hertz, which isn't ideal at all. Well, let me start with saying the good news is that when I went into the AMD Catalyst control panel, it said that the maximum reported refresh rate of this display was 75 Hertz. I couldn't select it though, so I set a custom resolution of 3440 by 1440 with a refresh rate of 75 hertz, and it worked. And sometimes I've done this on other monitors and I've found that this doesn't actually sort of help anything, but I booted up Battlefield 4 and the whole thing felt really nice and fluid. Honestly, it was really amazing. The game looks great on the IPS panel, but ultimately it feels really fluid as well. Yes, it's not as good as a 144Hz monitor or the 200Hz monitor uh, that, I, that I tested last, but honestly, this is a cracking monitor for Battlefield 4. My experience was really, really nice. The whole immersion that you get from an ultra-wide monitor here was present. That subtle curve as well helps to sort of bring me into that immersion, and ultimately it was a really, really nice experience, and I was really impressed with how good this thing is. Moving on to Call of Duty Black Ops 3, not quite the same experience and I really would benefit from a higher refresh rate here, even at that overclocked 75Hz. And I think it didn't really help that Black Ops has this weird V-Sync issue, and unless you're using FreeSync or G-Sync, or running this at a standard refresh rate of 60Hz, it was slightly off, still very playable, but not as good as something you would find on a more dedicated gamery monitor. But ultimately I was still fairly impressed but if I was going to take up Black Ops 3 again like properly, this wouldn't be the monitor I'd want to do it on. The final piece of the puzzle though is productivity because pretty much half the people that are going to be watching this video will probably be interested in that more than the gaming side of things and productivity really is where this monitor shines. Because you don't need that adaptive refresh rate, 
The selling feature of a monitor that has it sort of goes out the window and that's when you can enjoy the screen real estate you've got from having such a wide display as well as that really nice IPS panel that provides really deep blacks and really rich colors. It seems to be fairly accurate as well. It's rated at over 99% of the sRGB color space. So if you're printing out sRGB stuff, it's gonna be pretty accurate. Please note though that if you are using DisplayPort, one thing I did notice is that to be honest, some things just, to be honest, looked a little bit crap. And that was because I had this set to DisplayPort 1.1, which was using six bit color. And as soon as I switched the monitor to DisplayPort 1.2, that went away and it said it was sending 10-bit color, although it says on the uh, specifications, I think it was 8-bit color plus something else. So I'm a little bit confused there, but regardless, once you put this into DisplayPort 1.2 and your computer is sending the right signal, everything is sunshine and rainbows. It really does look very good. Whether this is the best looking display on the market, I'm not entirely sure. And doing a direct comparison to the UC97 and 98 isn't possible because I haven't tested the 98 and I haven't used the 97 in about a year. But regardless, this is one hell of a display. It has a really nice rich panel, really nice ultra wide experience. And that curve does help uh, for general immersion when you're doing gaming. But if you are doing some serious productivity with sort of straight lines, yes, that might throw you off, but it's such a subtle curve that I don't think it's gonna to be too much of a big deal, if at all, for most people. So then with that, it brings us towards the conclusion of this video. And to be honest, I'm a little bit sad at the conclusion because the only thing that I don't like about this monitor is the price. Sadly, it's about the same sort of price. It's around about just over 675 pounds, 800 pounds. So it cuts in at the same sort of price as the UC98, well, sort of in between that and the UC97 and the 98. And the only real advantage to this over the UC97 that we saw last year is the fact that I could overclock it to 75 hertz. Image quality wise, it's pretty similar. This probably has slightly better speakers, but it's not really a big selling point. So I'm a little bit disappointed, but it doesn't come in a little bit cheaper because then it would be really easy to recommend but at this price point, I would say that most people should probably be looking at the LG UC97 that you can get for even less than this display. But having said that, if you do get this display, I really don't think anyone is gonna be disappointed. This thing looks crazy, it looks amazing, both on the outside and as the actual Im image quality suggests. For gamers, if you don't really do much in the way of first person shootery stuff, then this is right up your alley. But ultimately, because it doesn't have FreeSync or G-Sync, other monitors in this price range do. So I would probably look at those instead. Overall though, this does win the top performer award. It's a monitor I'm genuinely considering buying for myself. And that's again, one of the biggest praises I can give it. But sadly, that refresh rate of only 75 Hertz or 60 if you don't overclock it, and the lack of FreeSync or G-Sync unfortunately means that this probably won't be the thing I'll be picking up. But I've genuinely loved every minute of using this and it does come highly recommended. It's just a shame it's not a little bit cheaper. So with that, it brings us to the end of this video. Thank you so much for checking it out. I hope it's been useful. And if you do wanna find the Amazon links to this product, I'll leave them in the description below. A massive thank you to Philips for getting this out, or I should say MMD, uh, for actually getting this review sample out. It's been brilliant, thank you. And thank you to Corsair as always for sponsoring this channel. If you want more videos like this, there are a actual absolute metric ton of monitor reviews that you can find again in the little eye somewhere over there. But otherwise you can find a load of PC gaming and technology content on the channel. Please like this video if you liked it because it lets other people know it's a video worth watching. And likewise, if it wasn't, you know what to do. But please subscribe if you haven't already and follow me on the social media, so Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, it's PC-centric. Thank you so much for checking out this video, and I'll see you in the next one.